We've got pizza on the door. We've got popcorn. We've got egg taped to the back. We've got wet laundry, steak, shrimp. Ladies and gentlemen, into the dryer it goes. Timer, 60 minutes. On the clock, ready, set, cook. And now we wait for the most brilliant experiment that YouTube has ever seen. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, where today it's laundry day. We're hoping for a clean experiment, but as usual, we'll probably find ourselves all washed up. Have you ever found yourself wishing for more efficiency in your day-to-day -day life? Well, I thought, hey, dryers are full of hot air. Ovens are full of hot air. Could you potentially cook while also doing the laundry? We're throwing steaks into a dryer. Because this is one of those days that they're like, hey, Matt, Pat, choose the topic, and this is the topic I chose. It's a bread gloves day, everyone. It's, it's a bread gloves day. <laughs> so I've got my laundry basket here equipped with all the essentials. Got your new Valkyrie merch that just arrived in the mail. But then also, I've got my raw steak. <laughs> so what? I'm going to open this dryer. Flopping my steak. My hoodie is nice and toasty, and my steak is ready to consume. Efficiency. Mm. Ready, three, two, one. Yeah! Okay, before we get into the actual experiment, I think that there's a few things here that I've left unexplained. Why are we here? Why are we outside? Why does our dryer look like it was teleported straight out of the 1980s? So let's rewind to the beginning of our story, shall we? The idea for today's episode actually came out of a random thought I had while doing laundry a couple weeks ago. If you've ever watched our channels before, you know that I'm all about optimization. How to make things faster, more efficient, more effective. So this random idea of cooking while doing the laundry seemed like a funny stunt that we could try for an episode. And in principle, the science of dryer cooking makes a lot of sense. You see, there are three main ways to transfer heat. Conduction, radiation, and convection. Conduction happens when two objects touch each other. Think about a steak hitting a hot grill, or when a hot slice of pizza touches the roof of your mouth. Radiation is when heat transfers via electromagnetic waves. When you're laying out in the sun and getting all nice and toasty, you're being warmed by the sun's electromagnetic waves. This is heating by radiation. And while we can't see it, the heating element in your oven emits invisible infrared infrared radiation to help cook your food. But the one that matters to us today is convection, where heat gets transferred through the warm movements of air. What we're talking about is the principle behind convection ovens, where air is being heated up using coils at the bottom of the oven, which then causes that hot air to rise. The cooler air then goes back down to the bottom of the oven, where it's heated back up and you generate a nice convection cycle. Fun fact, that's actually why they always tell you to place the food on the bottom rack of a convection oven. It's because the air down there is always going to be the hottest. Another fun fact, pretty much much every oven qualifies as a convection oven to some extent, whether or not they're explicitly marketed that way. It's just what happens when you have a device that's built to heat things up. The main difference with actual convection ovens tends to be that they have fans circulating the air faster. But when you look at it from that standpoint, a dryer is basically a convection oven for your clothes. Air is being heated up and circulated through the chamber via the turning of the drum. You also have fans pumping the air out through vents in the back. Oh, those vents are actually the reason we're outside with the experiment. We weren't sure just how much odor this thing would be pumping out, and we really didn't want our laundry room to be smelling like Outback Steakhouse for the next week. It's just gonna be blowing hot air straight out the back, just like someone else we know. Out the back? Thank you very much. <laughs> All my hot air comes out of the front. Out of the front. <laughs> Other things come out the back end. So overall, everything seemed like it was in place for a dryer to work exactly like an oven, except, you know, with the added bonus of also tenderizing the meat as it spins around inside the drum. At least, that's the thought I started with, but there was only one way to find out for sure, test it, and then monetize the results of that test for the enjoyment of viewers on the internet. I mean, smooth. So, obviously this is gonna fail horrifically, but I figured the way to start this episode is by just doing it the way that you would just think to naturally do this. Throw a couple of raw foods in there, let them tumble around for a cycle or two, see how well they cook. I expect that once we get some experimental test results, once we do some research off camera, we're gonna realize that maybe something about them tumbling in the dryer is not gonna actually work and we'll need to modify it a little bit. But for now, step one, just throw food in there and see what happens. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have 
a couple of selections to tumble around in the dryer. We've got ourselves some popcorn. Mm, we gotta put this in a bag or something. <gasps> Freezer pizza, there you go. We've got ourselves <laughs> shrimp. Sometimes you just want a little surf with your turf. Boop, in there. <laughs> We've also got ourselves egg. I've seen a lot of Bon Appetit videos where there's like a hundred different ways to cook an egg. One of the ways they did not say that you could cook an egg was by throwing it in the dryer. I beg to disagree. Mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs> hey! Yes! I know we have the steak tumbling around. I'm just gonna throw in bag steak too. Okay. Just for posterity's. Yeah. There we go. For posterity's steak. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed of everything we do, Stephanie. I know. All that was left was setting the timer. One of the unexpected benefits of buying a rehabilitated dryer off of Craigslist was that our refurbisher actually knew an incredible amount about how this thing operated, including its specific drying temperatures. For this model, its range was between 125 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 51 to 60 degrees Celsius. And when you think about it, it's actually quite a bit lower than your typical oven, which you'd be setting somewhere around 350 degrees or 100 176 C. As such, we expected the dryer to act more like a slow cooker than a typical oven. And so we figured a normal hour-long dry cycle would be the perfect place to start. Ready, three, two, one. Yeah! Oh, it's clunking around. Oh, you can hear it clunking. Oh, no. An hour later, it was time to check out the load. Immediately, it was clear that doing this outside was a good call, because the area around our garage smelled a bit like a seafood restaurant. Smells like lunch. Something had definitely cooked, maybe. Fearing what awaited us on the other side, we opened the door. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it looks like something died. It looks like a murder scene a little bit in there. A family-friendly murder. It's worth calling out that those murder smears were just from that one steak that I had thrown in there for the laughs. Other than that small amount of juice, the dryer was perfectly clean. None of the other zipper seal bags we used had leaked in any way. So early signs showed promise for the dryer cook. But looks are just one thing. The true test was in the actual food. And immediately we were shocked by the results. The steak I just threw in the drum, it actually cooked. Just not in the way that I had expected. You can immediately tell that the part that was touching the side of the dryer has actually cooked, not through convection. This is actually cooked through conduction, which is because it was touching the hot metal on the side of the dryer. Look at, look how big that is. Wow. Wow. I can't believe we even got like a rendering on here. Yeah. This is almost edible, right? Can I eat this? No. It's I... not bad. That gives me hope, ladies and gentlemen. And it wasn't the only surprise to come out of the dryer. The steak in the bag left us totally speechless. Steak in a bag! It's totally cooked! Steak in a bag! I don't even think it leaked. Looks legit, man. Oh! 100%. You could throw this in a sandwich right now! It's hot. Film Theory offers no medical or nutritional advice. It's cooked. It's cooked! <laughs> and it's great! <laughs> It is great. It's not too hard. It's it's like nice and tender. It's still got moisture in it. We could have done it in like half the time. It's actually tender. I can't mm -hmm. believe this. It's great. It's because it's been beaten up in the dryer. It is. I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> I can't believe this worked. And even more surprising, the shrimp was just as good, if not better. Dink. That's delicious. It's fantastic. It's so fantastic. good. Fantastic. It's so good. The popcorn and egg, meanwhile, yeah, nothing really happened. Though the egg was certainly warm, it was still just a scrambled liquid. And the popcorn, identical to when it went in. I think it had to do with the fact that the popcorn oil and scrambled egg, being mostly liquid, have a much higher heat capacity than solids like meat. You've probably noticed something like this happen when you go for a swim outside. You ever wonder why on a hot day the water in the pool is so cold while the pavement around the pool is hot enough to burn your feet? Well, both the water and the concrete are getting hit by the same sun, but the water takes much longer to heat up. It has a higher specific heat, which means that it's going to take more energy to produce a temperature change. My guess is that our dryer just needed more time or a higher heat to make the changes necessary in those two food items. So that was four out of the five foods that we had thrown into the dryer, but there was still one item left over from our tumble cycle. One that needed a bit of detective work to remember what it was. Can anyone tell me what this was? Maybe the smell will remind us all what this was. Oh. It smells like pizza, but it looks... <laughs> 
<laughs> like radioactive waste. The frozen pizza wasn't hand-tossed, it had been dryer-tossed, to the point of forming three perfectly sized dough balls. Because of the low heat, the crust never got a chance to crisp up and brown, resulting in a gooey mess of cheese, sauce, and dough. But again, looks aren't everything. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, 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 no! Ah! This tastes a lot like a Hot Pocket. <laughs> It's not as bad as it looks. I'll give it that. It's Mix even hot on the inside. It's even if hot on the inside. If you open up the inside, yep. it's it's very hot. Honestly, I was shocked. Stephanie was shocked. Neither of us ever expected this to work without having to modify the test in any way. And yet, here we were with three perfectly edible items. Why do you keep taking bites of it? And do you keep taking big bites? I actually think it's really good. Oh, get out of here. Get get I out of town. You know what? I'm going to follow it up. With the with, shrimp. With a, with a bite of my steak. Which only left us with one place to go. Taking this idea to its natural conclusion, doing laundry while we cook. Drying wet laundry while also throwing in some shrimp, some steak, some frozen pizza. Could it all get done in one dryer cycle or would the wet, cold clothes affect how everything cooked? Or worse, would the bags explode and permanently ruin our clothes? So, that's exactly what we did. We put a light load of laundry through the washer so it could be exactly as wet as they'd normally be getting into the dryer. Got my black shirt, got some quality Game Theory merch from yesteryear. Lastly, of course, our Game Theory Unmentionables. <laughs> I think so. those are from 2017. They held up remarkably well. We've also, at the bottom of our laundry basket, got our meal. This time, though, we did make some adjustments. Since the shrimp and steak worked so well, we just tossed them on in. For the pizza, in an effort to preserve at least some of its structural integrity, we used heat-resistant tape to attach it to the dryer door. And for the eggs, we actually strapped them to the back, hoping that some of the heat conduction from the warm dryer walls might actually help cook the eggs fast enough for a single dry cycle. I was, admittedly, a bit excited for this one. We could patent this, Stephanie. Oh my God. This has a chance to revolutionize the world. Why have two giant appliances, <laughs> one in your kitchen, one upstairs, when you can fuse them together into the most brilliant hybrid that humanity's ever seen? For years, we have been stuck thinking about our laundry and our kitchen and our food prep in two separate worlds. Now, the food basket and the laundry basket become one in one beautiful experiment, and that is happening today. See you in an hour. I've got a meeting. <laughs> Bam. Now, while my laundry cooked, I also wanted to look up whether this wound up being a huge waste of electricity. I mean, tumble dryers supposedly use a bunch of electricity each time they're run. Is this horrifically less efficient than using an oven? Well, a typical tumble dry cycle uses between two and six kilowatt hours of electricity. Compare that to a conventional oven, which typically uses about 2.3 kilowatt hours for an hour of baking. Now, admittedly, the oven is giving you a lot more bang for your buck. You're cooking with a lot more heat in that circumstance. But in both cases, you're consuming about 30 cents worth of electricity per hour. And hey, if now you're able to do your laundry and cook at the same time, well, now you're really energy efficient. You hear that? Time to check out the results. But did I have myself a nice delicious meal complete with dry clothes? Or did I just wind up with a big mess? Will I have dry clothes? Will I have a cooked meal? Will we have changed cuisine forever? All is about to be revealed. Three, two, one, bam! Okay, Here. first feedback. Oh, okay, yeah. Check Let me just it. empty Close out my first. laundry. Close. Very Close. dry. This is very wearable right now. Oh, yeah. Very dry. Oh, it smells a little bit like shrimp. Yep. We could have used the dryer sheet, maybe. Fishy smell or no, we had ourselves a dryer full of clean, warm clothes. So I call that half of the experiment a win. But what about the food? We started off with the proteins. Again. The steak's good. Still perfect. It's tender and everything. And it doesn't taste anything like my underwear. Mmm. Mmm. It's tender. It's very good. It's it's actually, it's actually very fantastic. Nice. Plate this one up. That's going on the dinner table. <laughs> oh, look at that shrimp. Oh, it is perfect. You could sell this at a restaurant. I know. It's Guy great. Guy Fieri's gonna be calling us tomorrow. We tried our laundry and we cooked a meal. 
reveal, Stephanie? This channel is so weird. This is the weirdest channel, and it's great. So that already was two huge wins. The cooking seemed completely unaffected by the wet, cold clothes that were circling around the bags. If anything, the food the second time around was juicier and moister, maybe because the added laundry slowed the cooking process down even more. As for our other foods, the popcorn, yeah, no real progress there. The egg was actually much closer to cook this time around, needing probably another half cycle to get it to a nice soft scramble. But the true winner for most improved went to the pizza. We've got our surf, we've got our turf, but do we have our side of pizza? My Italian grandmother rolls in her grave. Stephanie, on behalf of all Italians, does this pass muster as our resident Italian? No, but it definitely is pizza. There's no part of it that's still frozen. It has all of the pizza flavors, and you know what? It doesn't have the consistency of mochi this time, which I also really appreciate. This was an absolute win. Cross the board, hands down, we made literally an entire, a, I mean, an entire meal. Well, also, drying our laundry. And just to really sell it, Steph and I retreated to the kitchen to plate these bad boys up. Was it a weird looking plate? You bet it was. But I largely attribute that to pairing a frozen pizza with shrimp. But could you have told that any one of those items were cooked in a dryer? No. No, you could not. Giving us to date our biggest win on the Food Theory channel. Emboldened by success, our minds started to reel with the possibilities. My mind is now open. Could you sous vide in a hot tub at the gym? Vacuum <laughs> smoothie, vacuum smoothie. A whole world of food and cooking has opened up to us today. We're like Isabella in Encanto. She's like, what else can I do? And we're oh. just like, what else can we do? And we're what like, what else can I do? If any one of those sound interesting, by the way, let us know down in the comments which one you'd like us to test, because you can bet we are doing this again. It was so much fun to do, and in the end, the dryer ultimately cooked me up the most satisfying meal that I'd had in a long time. Not just because the food was delicious, but because nothing tastes sweeter than success. But hey, are you looking for a great meal that isn't covered in dryer lint? Well then, consider our sponsor for today's Today's episode, Grubhub. Have you ever gotten so busy that you try to find insane ways of combining your cooking and your laundry just to save you a couple of minutes? Cooking takes time and effort, and it gets your focus away from doing the work that you have to do, or taking care of your kids, or, you know, just relaxing, or beating yet another Erd Tree avatar in Elden Ring. There are so many of those darn things. Life shouldn't have to be full of trade-offs like that, and getting meals delivered to your door with the help of Grubhub makes that balance easier. Grubhub lets you reclaim that time for yourself, allowing you to order delivery delicious meals from your favorite local restaurants without needing to waste time driving there or prepare a full meal at home. And now Grubhub is not only bringing home the bacon, it's also bringing home the goods. In addition to delivering meals, Grubhub goods can also bring everyday items straight to your door. All the essentials, snacks, paper towels, toilet paper, soaps, lotions. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've had to do a late night run to the store in order to pick up extra batteries for recordings or extra paper towels because we ran out. And that now is 10 minutes to the store, 10 minutes while while you're in the store, 10 minutes driving back, a half hour of wasted time at minimum. But with Grubhub Goods, I'm getting that time back while also getting exactly what I need when I need it. Out of milk, Grubhub it. Need a late night taco? Grubhub it. Need every last minute to clean for your parents visiting your house but you suddenly realize that you're missing toilet paper? Grubhub it. Or heck, just Grubhub all of that stuff at the exact same time. It's efficient, just like drying your laundry while cooking your dinner. And as one last point of efficiency, if you use my link in the description, you get 50% off your $15 order from Grubhub Goods. Reclaim your time and reclaim your life with the help of Grubhub. Life is just too short to waste so much time running back and forth to the store. Use the link down in the description below, and as always, remember, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.